it's so good to see you, Church of the Highlands. What a great weekend. And I just want to say we're in our part two of the Frequency Series, which is just a fantastic word God's been speaking to us about, cutting through the noise. So this is part two, but first I just want to say welcome to all those that are watching at one of our campuses, 16 campuses, one church in 16 locations. And of course, all you that are watching online or watching during the week on demand. And we just want to say to every single person that's watching us, for one of our correctional facilities. Thank you so much. We love you. You're a priority to our heart, and we just love you, love you, love you. Hey, church, let's all clap our hands for all those who have joined us. Come on, show your love. Fantastic. It's amazing. Love the season that we're in. My goodness, the men's night was crazy. Incredible. I can't believe we got the smell out of here. That's just a miracle uh, at every location. I know you feel the same, but uh, great, great things happening with men. Of course, small group, great fall season, and being able to lead one, and then just neat things that are happening as God speaks to us, uh, just about hearing God's voice. I know 21 days of prayer, my goodness, it has already just uh, done so much in my heart every one of these days, whether it's the Monday through Friday from 6 to 7 or on Saturdays at 9 or joined together. And, and here, I, th I think this is important. If you've not been able to be at one, don't think because you didn't make the first week, you know, you're banned for the second week. You know, just everybody can be a part. Join in now. Or, or watch online. Be a part of what God is doing all throughout the, the, the 21 days. I know God's going to speak to you and help you uh, in, in your season of life. So don't forget uh, to be a part of that. Uh, last week, Pastor Chris gave a phenomenal message. If, if you didn't hear part one of Frequency, uh, you want to go online and hear that. Because it helped me so much realize how important it is that I have a prepared heart. That my heart is ready to hear from God that wants to speak to me. Uh, I love the theme verse. One of the theme verses that Pastor Chris shared with us was John chapter 10, verse 3. And the, all the passages there are so incredible about the voice of God. It says, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. This is amazing. He calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. We are living in days that we need God to lead us. Uh, through our lives. And, and thank God he's a God that knows our name. He knows exactly what's happening to us. So fantastic message, all those things about a prepared heart, because it's a prepared heart that's ready to listen and hear God's voice. Just having a repentant heart, which is a, a great word, uh, a heart that's refocused. Lord, help me to refocus my priorities and my time and things that I'm thinking about. And then a heart that's revived. And so fantastic message. Uh, you, you don't want to, you don't want to, you, you want to go back and catch that one. I, I promise you that. And then Pastor Chris is on his way back from South Africa. He's been there training and teaching. One of the Hillsong churches there. My goodness, I think he preached 20 times. And, and then turned around and thank God he did this for us on our behalf at Ark and Grow. Training church planters. So he spent some time and he did this to, to be able to train plant, plant church guys that are planting churches and, and, and couples that are going to plant churches in South Africa. In 2018, we're planting churches in South Africa, which I think is incredible. Come on. You ought to clap your hands for that. He's been there doing that, so thank God for that. But he'll be back here next week, of course, uh, in part three of Frequency. You don't uh, want to miss that. I know God will speak, and God will help us uh, with that. So today we're in part two, and I want to talk for a few minutes uh, out, of a, out of a passage in the Old Testament because it has been a passage in the Old Testament that has so encouraged me uh, to, to believe that God wants to speak to me. And sometimes I struggle in that area. I want to talk about the idea of he speaks to me. He speaks to me. And before we pray over this, I like praying over our time together, is I just want to encourage you, hey, let's all pray for our country. My goodness gracious, the things that are happening. Uh, I, I was talking to pastors this morning that are in the Virginia area, in that Charlottesville region, and they're having church today, multiple churches that we communicated with, uh, diverse churches, going to have church today, and they're going to go back out and, get, and, and they're going to engage that community, love that community, serve that community with the love of Jesus. I can tell you this, we're praying in, in the 21 days, God push back the hate, God push back all this violence, push back these things, only Jesus only Jesus. That's the heart of our pastor. And, and so thank God we planted churches there. We could go out and get in that community and love on those that are suffering and just push back all this craziness. So let's all pray. Let's pray together over that. Father, we just thank you for your word. And Lord, we thank you that the name of Jesus, every knee bows. And Lord, we just come against hate. We come against racism in Jesus' name. We come against all these things that are trying to tear apart our nation, Father. And we pray that the name of Jesus would just prevail. It would be preeminent.
preeminent God. So we pray for those churches and that community, God. We pray, Father, that the word of God would rise. And Lord, we come again. We push back evil in Jesus' name with the love of God and with the heart of God. And so, Lord, we just pray for that in our nation. We pray for that in our own city, Father. We're going to believe you that you're going to do something great. Lord, we believe that in the last days you're going to pour out your spirit in the name of Jesus. Pour out your spirit, Father. We need you. We need you, we need you. So, Father, help us to lean in because, Father, these are days that we need to know your voice, we need to listen for your voice, and we need to be ready to respond with the love of God and with the power of the name of Jesus in our life and through our life. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, and everybody said a good amen. Come on, turn to the person next to you and say, I'm glad you made it to church. Come on, at every campus, look at the person that was your second choice. Now that you know you're that, tell them, you look like you could use a little church, my friend. Church. Talking about hearing the voice of God. You know, I've always had great hearing. I've always been, I've always uh, uh, pride myself on being able to hear real well. I can hear good. I can eavesdrop on conversations. It's amazing. I love eavesdropping on people's conversations and hearing what people are saying. My wife has been telling me lately that I'm hard of hearing. And I say, huh? Come on, somebody. And um, we're, we're going to look at a, a passage of scripture about hearing, 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 having good, having good ears, spiritual ears. 1 Samuel chapter 3. It's in the Old Testament. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Love this story. I'll go, I'll go slow and give a little commentary. 1 Samuel chapter 3 it says, And the boy, Samuel, ministered before the Lord under Eli. In those days, the word of the Lord was rare. There were not many visions. Those were days that um, God's word was so special. And because of some uh, leadership that had went sideways and some painful things that were happening during that time, uh, God, the, the, the word of the Lord was just, wasn't, wasn't speaking as much as, as it had been. It says, but on one night, Eli, whose eyes were becoming so weak that he had, come, that he had gotten to a place where he could barely see, was lying down in his usual place. Now, the lamp of the Lord had not yet gone out. Thank God for that. It's not gone out today. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark was. And then the Lord called Samuel, and Samuel answered, Here I am. So Samuel is bedded down in the temple, and and in the temple there's this place called the Holy of Holies. That's where the Ark of Covenant, that's where the word of the Lord was. That was the the Ark of his presence. Uh, You you read that about that in the Old Testament, kind of the place where God spoke. And Eli is over, uh, who's the priest, over in his usual place. But this young boy, most scholars believe that that Samuel was 12 years old. And so he's over there, and he's, he's trying to figure out a way to sleep as close as he can to the presence and the voice and the word of God. And he's, he's there so close. And then the Bible says that God Almighty, even though the word was rare, God Almighty speaks and says, Samuel, says his name, Samuel. And, 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 and Samuel hears this voice and says, uh, here I am. And then look what happens. He got up and he ran to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. He thought it was Eli calling. He heard this voice. And I love Eli. He got woke up out of his sleep. Eli said, I did not call you. Go back to bed. Uh, go, come on, can I have an amen from all the parents? Go back to bed. <laughs> go back to bed and lie down. So he went, and it says that he laid back down. Again, oh, thank God for that verse. That word right there gives me hope. Again, the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel got up, went to Eli, and said, Here I am. You called me, didn't you? I heard you call me. My son Eli said, I did not call you. Go back to sleep. Quit waking me up. Go lie down. Now Samuel did not know the Lord. The word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. So it says that Samuel was still young, 12 years old. He was still learning. Uh, he had not figured everything out. He, he was not a professional. He was, he's still trying to sort through how God spoke. And is that the Lord? Is that not? He was still uh, pliable and soft and, and had a young heart. So the Bible says that. But then the Bible says, and the Lord called Samuel a third time. And Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, here I am. You called me. Then Eli realized, Eli realized that the Lord was calling the boy. So Eli told Samuel, go and lie down, and if 
he calls you. Say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. That's a good place to highlight. It's one of the greatest responses that you and I can have when God speaks to us or we see something in his word. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down in that place. The Lord came, stood, calling at the other times, called like he did the other times. Samuel, Samuel. So now the Lord gets even more aggressive. He's called him one time. He's called him a second time. He's called him a third time. Now we're on the fourth time. He says it one more time. Hey, I'm calling you one more time. Then he says, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, speak for your servant is listening. And the Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something. I like how he gives him an announcement. You know, God is an announcing God. He told Moses, I'm about to deliver the children of Israel. He told uh, Mary, I'm about to do something, and it's going to be called Jesus, and he will save the people from their sins. He told the shepherds, what's getting ready to happen is going to change the world. I like that God is an announcing God. It's like he can't, he has to share it. You ever say, I'm an announcing dad. <laughs> Sometimes I say, hey, kids, don't make me get up out this chair. I'm about to get up out the chair. Kind of announce it. The Lord said to Samuel, see, I'm about to do something in Israel that will make the ears of everyone who hears it tingle. Out of all the people that God could share that with, he picks a 12-year-old boy. It finishes up. I love verse 15. Samuel, after he shares what, what is going to happen, that there's going to be a tough time and I'm going to do something, but it's, it's going to be, you're going to have to navigate it and keep leaning on me, do my word. Then it says, the Bible says, Samuel laid down until morning and then opened the doors of the house of the Lord. He just continued to be and do what he had done and been because in that place was where God spoke to him. So he was going to stay close to where God spoke to him. Can I have a good amen for God's word? I love these verses. I love everything about it. I love how God chose to speak to Samuel. Out of everybody he could have pinpointed, out of everyone he could have located on that night, he decided to speak to a, a young boy, just a, someone who was still trying to understand things, who maybe didn't have everything together. That, and, and I love not only that he, that he spoke to him, I love that he spoke to him, and, and even though Samuel didn't understand it, uh, he didn't give up on the first time. That he continued, and, and even though Samuel didn't know how to receive his voice the first time, God spoke to him. That, that helps me in my life. It helps me to understand things that are bigger than at times what my mind tells me, and, and sometimes the way I feel about prayer, and I feel about God's voice, and I feel about the idea of God wanting to speak to me. Because at times when it comes to prayer or hearing the voice of God, I just think so much less. I, I don't believe that, that God wants to really speak to me. I fall into the trap that, that I think there's, there's no way he wants to speak to me. Not me. I mean, not me with, with my situation. Not me with, 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 with what's going on in my life. I, I, maybe God wants to speak to the spiritual elite. and Maybe God speaks to the special edition, kind of top shelf Christians, the, the spiritual giants. But he doesn't want to speak to me. And one of the problems that I have is I have the problem and the habit of comparing myself to other people that are so perfect. Because there's so many people that are so much more perfect than me. So yes, God wants to talk to the perfect, but God doesn't really want to talk to me. There's just no way. Not, he knows my struggle. He knows my sin. He knows my situation. He knows my shortcomings. He knows that there's been times that I've not read my Bible like I wanted to. Or there's been times that I've had an ebb and flow of life as it relates to prayer. Or there's been times that I, I didn't serve him with my whole heart. I, I was distracted in life and I, I got sidetracked in things. He knows that there's been times that I've not given and been as generous as I should be. And God knows all that. And because God knows all that, I, I, I'm excluded from hearing God's voice and, and knowing the voice of God because of these things. See, what happens is I find myself believing that God speaks to them but not to me. And speak to me. But then all of a sudden, I read 1 Samuel chapter 3. And when I read 1 Samuel chapter 3, it fills me 
with so much hope because there I find out that God enjoys speaking to regular people that even at times don't always get it exactly. Sometimes God enjoys talking to someone a first time and when they don't obey or they don't do exactly what they need to do, maybe they have the right heart but they're still trying to figure out things. They're a little distracted. God will speak again a second time. I like the fact that God even speaks a third time. Thank God he spoke a fourth time. Come on, can I have a good amen? Because that gives me hope. I wish I was perfect in my obedience. I wish that I always responded 110%, but sometimes I don't. So when I read 1 Samuel chapter 3, let's me realize that if my heart will be surrendered, if I can just keep a surrendered heart, Lord, during that time, if you'll help me to learn your sound and if you'll help me to respond to the sound of truth and to the sound of your Holy Spirit as you speak to me in 21 days of prayer or as you speak to me as I read your word or as you speak to me while I worship, Lord, help me have that surrendered heart that even though I didn't understand it, was that God? Was that not God? I'm not real sure. Thank you that you speak again. So I want to live my life fighting those traps fighting against those ideas that I, I want to live my life, he speaks to me. Speaks to me as a dad, as a husband. Speaks to me as someone that's trying to help others. He speaks to me. So I want to give you some ideas around this. Just some ideas. I think once our heart is prepared, and I'm not talking about an evil heart or a wicked heart that you don't want, don't do anything to do with God and just rebellion. I'm talking about a heart that just says, I'm trying to, I want the Lord. I want the Lord. I'm not perfect. Not everything is all together. Still got some things I'm working on. But I really want to know God's voice. I, I want to cut through the noise. And I, I want my frequency to be in tune with him. I, I want to make sure that I'm hearing him. I'm just going to give you some, some ideas around hearing and our, our, God's heart for us. So here's the first one. The first one is a humble heart ushers in the voice of God. A humble heart. I've learned in reading in this story, and you can see it all over Scripture, that a humble heart ushers, ushers. In South Louisiana, we say usher. Can the ushers come forward, please? Ushers. A humble heart ushers in the voice of God. See, a humble heart gives you fresh ears. Matter of fact, a humble heart is it, it's the prepared soil of God's voice. I think it just, it prepares us to hear God's voice. There's such preparation when our heart is humble. Let me explain that. I think it's so interesting that God did not speak through the established religion. He could have spoke to Eli, but Eli had a lot going on, and Eli had some sons that weren't acting right. He, they weren't living right. God chose to speak to a young man. He spoke to the young. So guess what? I ain't young no more. I'm a little old. I enjoy being old. I like being 53. I love it, matter of fact. You just say stuff, go to bed at 8.30. Come on, somebody. I'm going to bed. I don't care. I love it. But my goal in life is I, I want to be young at heart. I want to be young in my action. I want to be young in my worship. I want to be young in my faith. I want to be young in my serve. I want to be young in my giving. I don't, I don't want to be old as it relates to God. I want to be, I want to have a, I love what Luke 18 says. They're bringing the children to Jesus and all the disciples said, no, no, get these kids out of here running all over the place and just going crazy. And Jesus says, no, 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 time out. Bring the children to me. And he looks at his disciples who are rebuking the kids and he says, no, 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 no. The kingdom of God is such as these. Unless you become like a child, you'll not enter in or you'll not receive the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about being childish. I'm talking about being childlike. God wants us to have a, that heart where we're, we're humble. Lord, keep me, keep me at a place where I'm pliable. I've not arrived. I think that's why the growth track is so important. We go to the growth track, and I know step two is this weekend, and you're able to do what? Discover how God, why you want? Because I want to serve. I just want to find somewhere to serve and, and not be like, I know everything. It's no fun being around know-it-all. Oh, I just want to stay humble. I just want to stay a learner. I don't know everything. Hey, don't become a pro. We're not pros in this. I mean, you know, it sounds cheesy, but don't be a pro. Stay low. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Came up with that earlier. Was not planned, as you can tell. 
Young keeps your signal strength strong. Lord, I just want to stay young before you. I want to be excited. I want to be innocent. Not afraid to ask a bunch of questions. Just trying to figure this thing out. A humble heart ushers in the voice of God. Here's the second thing. Every verse speaks his voice. Every verse speaks his voice. Did you know there is so much potential in every passage in the Bible? And it's potential. But when you mix your faith with it, it becomes purpose and truth for your life. When you read it and you say, I'm going to do that. And, and so it, every verse speaks his voice. God is a talking God. God is a communicating God. We always remember this about relationship, kind of relationship 101. I had to learn this. I'm continuing to learn this as a dad and as a husband and as a friend. The idea of that relationships are built on communication. The number one way we sustain and grow relationships is communicating. Guess what? The number one way we sustain and grow our our relationship with God is daily communicating with his word. Read our Bible. We're in church. In a small group, we learn God's word together. You know, maybe you're here and you say, man, I want to learn more about it. Maybe it's Highlands College. I don't know. I just want to be in a place where I learn God's word because learning God's word is that communication. And God is a talking God. And the word is, is always his voice. I people all the time say, I haven't heard the voice of God. Well, have you read the voice of God? This is love letters, a whole lot of it. Get in it. See what God says to you and I. Here's the third idea. Uh, leads me to this idea, is that value his voice above all. I think it's so important. We're trying to cut out the noise. Samuel did what, what Pastor Chris encouraged us last weekend. Eliminate all the competing voices. Shh. Live a life where I'm standing by. I'm on alert. I'm in the presence of God. I've been brought. You know what's amazing? Did you know that Samuel's mother was a praying mom? Her name was Hannah. Hannah was barren, would go to the house of God, pray. One day she was there. Eli saw her, thought she just was kind of overdoing it, said, what's going on? She said, I'm believing God for children. I'm believing God for children. Eli said, okay, you can have a child. God's going to bless you. She says, when the Lord gives me a son, I'm going to bring him to God's house, and I'm going to give him to God. I'm going to dedicate him to the Lord. Guess what? A year later, she had a son, and she brought Samuel to the house of God. That's why Samuel was in the presence of God. It's because he had a praying mom. A mom that believed the voice of God. Parents, how important it is that we pray by name for our children, our grandchildren, and our grown children. Well, it it puts them in an environment where they value his voice. I found out that that God is, it's it's kind of an Alabama word, Louisiana word. God's not a hollerer. He's not a yeller. He's not a screamer. We, We always say, God, speak up. Can't hear you. Speak up. Here's a big idea. I want you to remember this. It may be worth writing down. We want God to turn up his voice. He's wanting us to turn down our lives. And I, yeah, I'm speaking. And many times it's a whisper. I think God prefers a whisper because a whisper means close proximity. And I think that's why 21 days are so important. 21 days says I'm, I'm going to make a decision and I'm going to get close to God. I'm going to hear his voice because if I'm close to him, that's what I think that's the goal of 21 days of prayer is to, to come out of it and be closer to him and his voice. Here's the fourth idea is share what he says. Share what he says. If you have a word, share it. Samuel did that. Did you know there are so many people that before they hear God's voice, they're going to hear your voice that's then going to help them hear God's voice? That's why we go to a small group. Guess what? That's many times why we lead a small group. Many of you, maybe even during 21 days of prayer, you kind of got something. You read something. You heard something. You think, hey, God's speaking to me. God could be speaking to you so that you can help someone else who needs to be spoke to. And you may be that person. You may be that hook. You may be that bridge to them. Why not consider leading a group? Because God may be talking to you so that you can talk to someone else who needs it. It's kind of how it works. God is speaking. God is a talking God. God wants to speak to me with all my baggage, all my stuff. God wants to speak to me. The the goal of my heart today, my prayer for you today, is that you leave here, no matter what's happened and what you've walked through, 
not of the baggage or the stuff or the situation or the struggle, the rejection, the ups and downs, the times that we heard, the times that we didn't hear, the times that we heard from God and we didn't even obey, that we still leave here believing that God wants to speak to me. God wants to speak to me. While we still have breath, there's an opportunity to obey God's voice. While we still have another day, we have an opportunity to hear God's voice for the day that's in front of me and for me to do what? To obey it. Leads me to the fifth idea, which is so important. Whatever he says to do, do it. Whatever he says to do, do it. I heard an old missionary tell me this one time. We were in Africa. It's a dear friend. He's gone to be with the Lord. And I love missionaries. This church loves missionaries. You support missionaries and missions. And this year alone, you'll take over 60 missions trips around the world to spread the love of God. Can I have a good amen for that? Come on, clap your hands at every campus. Amazing. The Great Commission. Love missionaries. And he said this to me. He leaned over to me one day. I was talking about trying to do, do what God wants me to do. He says, son, always remember this. Obedience is our love language to God. Obedience, it's, it's his favorite language. Is when you and I obey, when we see something or we hear something or, or someone helps us through something in a small group or a spiritual mentor or someone that loves us dearly, that, that is Jesus-like. When we obey those things, whatever he says to do, I want to do it. What I have found out in my own life, what I found out in my own journey, that when I obey God, when I begin to obey him, he releases his destiny for my life. But when I'm disobeying him and I'm saying no, I'm pushing him away, or I'm cutting up all the other voices, then I find myself confused. I find myself trying to figure out. But obedience helps release the destiny that God has on my life. I love the finish of 1 Samuel chapter 3. It winds up, and it says this about Samuel, this boy. Here's what his future's about. Verse 19, the Lord was with Samuel as he grew up, and he let none of his words fall to the ground. And all of Israel, all of Israel from Dan to Beersheba, recognized that Samuel, I like this word, was attested. He was attested. It was proven that he was a prophet of the Lord all of his life because at a, at a young age, he made a decision. I'm going to be close. I'm going to be in the right place. And I just want to have a surrendered heart. Lord, here I am. Use me. What is it that you need? And he, 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 he valued God's voice above everything else. And even though he didn't hear it the first time, he didn't say, well, that disqualifies me now from knowing God's will. I missed it, therefore, I'm going to live a life where I missed it. No, no, no. I'm encouraged that he speaks to me, that even if I, I didn't hear it the first time, God does not give up on me. And guess what? If God doesn't give up on you and I, then let's not give up on his voice because he is still speaking today. There's still an opportunity, no matter what you've been through, no matter the bumps, the bruises, and the bang-ups, God Almighty wants to speak to you. Encourage you with that today. Encourage you with that today. He's a talking God. You know, I grew up, I'll finish with this. I grew up with a speech challenge. So when I went to first grade, no one understood me. So I can remember vaguely going to a special school for about three weeks, and they evaluated me. My sisters have told me a lot about this. And they sent me back to regular school. Said he can be in regular school, but he's going to need to be in what we call back in those days resource. Thank God for sensitivity today. Thank God that so many give their life to help children that, that have a challenge or a situation. It was rough back in those days. You just roll up in the homeroom, about 8, 10, hey, got fish sticks today? Let's get those resource guys down here. God help them. It's just brutal, brutal. I can say it because I lived it. And so for about eight years till the eighth grade, I went on to high school and, and they made some other adjustments. And I look back on my life and I thank God for these speech therapists. There was one lady that stayed with me for six years. Never made me feel weird. Never made me feel less. Valued me. Helped me through when I'd say my R's or I'd stutter. I couldn't say wood. I'd say wood, wood. I'd say certain words. She just worked with me. 
Then I go back, about 12 or 30, you go back to regular class. And so 12 30, I go back to regular class, spend the rest of the day there. And I, I excelled in two of the courses in regular class. The first one was honors recess. I, said, I, kill, I kill honors reset. It's dominating it. And then the other was uh, something we did every once in a while, which uh, we call show and tell. Show and tell. I was good at that. And uh, so I remember one time, about sixth grade, fifth, sixth grade, so at the end of the year, we're going to have our end of the year school party. And so she said, hey, right before we have our party, let's do a big grand, grand finale uh, show and tell. It's going to be a big grand, kind of Super Bowl of show and tell. It's like, man, we all are fired up about it because I excelled in there and Resource could represent, get a little shout out. And so uh, I got, so she sent around a sheet of paper, had your name and a blank sheet. I was second to last, had another kid that was last. He sat by me and he didn't talk to me much. He wasn't down with Resource and he, he, he was, you know, kind of high level. He always threw shade at me and just kind of thought he was better than everybody else. And so anyway, I, I write mine. His next, I write G.I. Joe. Come on, G.I. Joe, going to bring him from the house, and I'm going to show it, and I'm going to tell about it. And then he write, he sees mine, he writes G.I. Joe. He ain't trying to, why are you trying to one-up somebody? Why you got to be like that for? You look at everybody else's, and you bring something different. That's why she did it. But then he handed it back to me with that kind of high-level, uppity, ego, pride look. So I gave it in. So like three days later, we start the, 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 the show and tell grand finale, and we're going through it. He said, who would like to go first? Guess what? He, he raises it. Ooh, I'll go first. Ooh. He had that Eddie Haskell spirit all up on him. Come on, old school, leave it to Beaver. Y'all don't know that. And so, uh, he, oh, I'll go first. He goes up there. He's got his G.I. Joe. It's in a box. Please. What's a G.I. Joe doing in a box? He says, my G.I. Joe is in a box. It's special edition G.I. Joe. It's a perfect G.I. Joe. It's never been touched, never been handled. My dad brought it here before this one. He's standing outside. He's got to go lock it up in a special edition room. It's got air conditioning. It's a special G.I. Joe. It's a scuba G.I. Joe. I don't know it's a scuba G.I. Joe. I ain't never seen the water. <laughs> don't know how to swim. He goes on and on and stuff. I said, okay, Joe, that's a lot. That's enough. Okay. Hey, could you pass it around? Can't pass it around. Special edition G.I. Joe. You can't touch it. You just walk by and look at it. <laughs> Dina, would you like to go next? Yes, I would. <laughs> Shout out to the resource crew. Where you at? I brought my G.I. Joe. I had a G.I. Joe, but my G.I. Joe lived in the backyard in a mud hole with my dog that ran on a chain. <laughs> my G.I. Joe, I lit its hair on fire. It had bumps. It had bruises. I strapped an N80 to its back and blew it up because my G.I. Joe had been to war. My G.I. Joe had seen some stuff in its life. My G.I. Joe had its leg pulled off. I had duct taped it because my G.I. Joe, he knew how to fight, and I live with duct tape in my backyard. <laughs> well, I got done, I gave it to the, everybody said, hey, throw it up against the wall, stomp on it, tear it up. It can handle it. I got more duct tape. It's been in the jungle before. And I got done, hey, everybody in the class gave me a big standing ovation. Whoa! Yeah, it's like, shout, resource, resource. <laughs> Let's have a party. Say, what does that got to do with church and hearing God's voice? It's got everything to do with hearing God's voice because life is not lived in a special edition box. My life ain't perfect. My life ain't locked away. My life isn't all cold and nice. My life is lived in the backyard with a dog on his chain. My hair's been lit on fire. I've had M80 strapped to my back. I've lived through the battle. And he speaks to me. He speaks to me. He speaks to me. Come on, clap your hands if you believe that. That's life. Glory to God. Glory to God. He speaks to me. He's looking just for someone that just has a surrendered heart. He says, Lord, I'm not perfect. I don't have it all together. But I need you. Church, he speaks to me. He speaks to me. And he wants to speak to you. Amen. Praise God. Let's, let's be seated.
Got a little preach on me. It's the heart of our pastor. It's the heart of this church. No matter what you've walked through. No matter what backyard you've lived in. No matter how many times you feel like you've ended up in a mud hole. He speaks to me. To bow our heads, let's pray together. Father, we thank you that you love us. You know us. <laughs> you love us. Maybe you're here today and you feel far from God. You feel away from God. You don't have to be. Maybe you feel like you're beyond the backyard. You're, you're out in the woods, lost. He speaks to you. He sent his son to speak to you. I'm going to ask all of our campus pastors to come and join us on stage. And I want to ask you today that if you just say, Dino, I need Jesus in my life. I need the Lord. I need a new beginning. I need a fresh start. Today you can do that. I'm not going to ask you to come forward or, or, or stand up, but I, I do want to connect with you. If you're here today and you say, I need a fresh start. I need a new beginning in Jesus. All things are passed away. But all things are new. Can you just slip up your hand? Thank you. Hands are going up all over the room. Thank you so much. It's amazing. Just right where you're at. Just pray this prayer right from your heart. You had to pray it out loud. You just pray from your heart. You may want to pray it out loud. You just pray from your heart. Say, dear Jesus, I give you my life. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I ask you to come into my heart, be my Savior, be my Lord. Forgive me of my sins, my many sins. But today I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me. Thank you for a fresh start. Thank you for a new, be new beginning. And thank you that today you speak to me. I'm yours. In Jesus' name. Lord, encourage every person today that your voice is working. They can hear from you. In Jesus' name.